All right, good topic, good topic. Is the path of manifestation crap? Okay, let's put it like that. Um, I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashiva. I have received a comment in previous videos and I have heard that a lot and you might have heard it also. Swamiji is bringing forward the path of manifesting your reality as the best path to uh, find, to, to reach to the space of enlightenment. And many people who are, especially traditionally speaking in the, or I should say, uh, I don't know if traditionally is the right word. Uh, people who follow spirituality have this tendency to be strongly associated to the path of, you know, you have to detach yourself from wealth, from fame, from everything. And, and that is the only way to get enlightened. Well, that's not true. And I'll share the click I got and the cognition I got about that. See, the per to get enlightened, we need to unclutch. We need to experience fulfillment, drop the desires for anything else, which it, for everything that is not aligned to your being, to your enlightenment. Many people will renounce things, material, name and fame, wealth, and many other things for the sake of enlightenment. And they will feel like this is the only path. This is the best path, the best path, the best path. Now, um, renouncing to things externally does not mean that you have dropped the desire in your inner space. That does not necessarily mean that you have reached the fulfillment that not being attached to these things bring. It can be a superficial action and it depends on your depth of cognition and the intensity of uh, and the authenticity with which you live these principles. Another path. See, if you're able to detach yourself and get fulfilled and drop the desire inside your inner space, great, you do it. You will have the benefits, no doubt. You will you know, go towards that space of enlightenment. Now, another path, if you are not, if you sincerely look inside and you see that you still have these desires inside of you, then another path available for that is to simply manifest your desire. Because superconsciousness is the source, Paramashiva is the source of the manifested reality. Everything that is manifested is manifested from Paramashiva, from superconsciousness. If you learn the science of manifestation, you become superconsciousness because superconsciousness is the source of manifestation. So that is another path which Swamji is making available today because um, today people, you know, they have so many desires and so many things that they don't want to drop and that's fine. Just fulfill it as fast as possible by working with the science of manifestation, manifest reality or para manifestation as well. Um, we manifest things in our life, sometimes consciously, sometimes unconsciously, but we manifest. And we don't fully understand what we manifest, why we manifest. We feel it is luck or we, we have our own conclusions of why things are happening. But the truth is, we are manifesting it uh, because of the inner space we cherish. So if you learn, if you focus on the science of manifestation, you will take responsibility and bring awareness to what's happening inside your inner space and you will be able to shift the thought currents accordingly in order to manifest what you want. Now, one advantage that the, the path of manifestation has over the path of renunciation is that you cannot fool yourself as long. See, in the path of renunciation, you can believe you have dropped the desire because you don't have any material, any wealth, any power, any fame around you. But deep down, you still have it. Swamiji was giving the example, you know, you have a sadhu, which has, sadhu is a holy saint, an Indian uh, man. And he has renounced everything and he lives with nothing. And he has his kamandalu, his water pot. But he is so attached to his kamandalu. All the desire to possess that he used to have towards everything in his life, because he has removed everything in his life, he can no longer, he dis, he's no longer possessing that, but he's taking all of that possessiveness towards the Kamandalu and he's possessing his water pot like nothing else. He is so attached to his water pot. And there's some stories where an enlightened being would come and um, there's a story of a, a sadhu who was attached to his dog 
uh, I think it was, yeah, his dog was the last attachment he had. He had all his possessiveness was going towards the dog and he had a dog, dog and, and um, who was living with him. And then that day, uh, he was living, no, he had attachment to the dog and to a plate. He had this uh, Ganga mud plate, a plate made out of mud of Ganga, the clay of Ganga, very holy. And these two things, all his attachment was focused on these two things. And then one day, uh, an enlightened being came and told him something. And uh, the story ended where the enlightened being took the Ganga mud plate and slammed it onto the dog. The plate broke, the dog died, and the sadhu became enlightened because he realized how possessive he was of these two things, the dog and the plate. And he simply dropped the possessiveness and became enlightened. So like that, uh, when you renounce, you know, you can, you can be stuck in that for a very long time, thinking that you have renounced because you only have a plate or a water pot and a dog, but the intensity of your possessiveness has like 10,000 times more towards these things than somebody else normally who has, you know, who is possessive of so many things simultaneously. So both are available. That's the click I got. And uh, for today's, today's world, the science of manifestas manifestation is more interesting because it is more accessible for everyone. Not everyone is willing to drop everything. So the spirituality has to be this Sanatana Hindu Dharma truths. They have to be um, usable by people, otherwise it's not useful. So the, the path of manifestation is not, uh, that person was saying, uh, crap. It is not crap. When you, because he's saying that because his own understanding, but if you look deep, it is not. It is as valuable as the other path. And depending on which path you decide to choose, you choose. But both paths lead to the same space. And, uh, and yeah, ultimately it is to reach the space of pure consciousness of Paramashivoham, where we realize that we manifest what we want. So Anji was saying in the recent satsang that when the, some, when the truth, the, the cosmic truth, the cosmic principles are not, when you don't see the cosmic principles, truths align to your day-to-day -day facts in your life, that is not enlightenment. When you realize that the truth and the facts of your life are aligned, that is enlightenment. So that is the science of manifestation. When you realize how you are responsible for manifesting what you're manifesting in front of you, that is enlightenment when you do not realize why you're manifesting what you're manifesting then there are some blind spots and the science of para manifestation has to be more engaged with more and more um, so that these blind spots get eradicated by the fire of awareness the fire of consciousness and the grace of paramashiva actually uh, awareness and consciousness is nothing but the grace of paramashiva the grace of guru um, it is you cannot put a word to it. What is grace and how you get it? You can't put a word. The only way to invoke and to get Guru's grace, Paramashiva's grace, is through seeking devotion, surrendering, prayerfulness. That's the only way. And the more you establish yourself in these spaces, the more you get his grace and the more your life becomes blissful. So that's what I want to share in this video, hoping it is bringing some uh, light to you. That's the click I got. So write if you have any comments below. I would be very happy to see uh, and to listen to uh, how you cognize what I just shared. And uh, subscribe, like, click the bell icon. Thank you for watching. Again, check the description below for uh, very nice uh, content. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Nityananda.